The way that it was explained to me was you would download this core wallet and run it on your computer. And one day you're just going to get 50 Bitcoins in your wallet. I have to say, you really do put the O in OG when I think of Bitcoiners and Bitcoin miners in the space. I think you've been in this Bitcoin space, the mining space, longer than anyone else I've ever met. So if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about how you got into Bitcoin and then Bitcoin mining. Yeah, absolutely. Um, started very, uh, very much like a hobby, like any other hobby. Um, you know, I, I was on IRC, um, started talking to some people who were discussing Bitcoin. IRC? Um, Internet Relay Chat. Okay. So um, before... Before there was Napster, there was Internet Relay Chat. Uh, it's kind of where file sharing was was born. It was even on dial-up. Um, you would get in there, and there would be bots that would be servers and chat rooms, and you would actually download um, from those bots by using uh, command prompts, you know, slash DCC send, and then whatever the, the code was from that server that you wanted. <laughs> so um, this was very, very early on, but um, it was a way for you to get free music, you know, eventually free movies, things like that. That's what intrigued me about it originally. And um, you started seeing a lot of guys talking about Bitcoin on there. Um, and this was when? What year? This was probably around 2013. And, um, well, or, I'm sorry, that was actually around 2010. And Oh, my goodness. Yeah. A year and, after. Yeah. And, and it, was, it was very much, uh, it was early on. Um, a lot of people were trying to explain it to me, and they were probably giving me very bad advice on it whenever it all came down to it. But <laughs> um, the way that it was explained to me was you would download this core wallet and run it on your computer, and one day you're just going to get 50 Bitcoins in your wallet. Um, <laughs> just like that. That Magic. was it. Yeah, and, and I, I didn't really, like, I, I couldn't wrap my head around it because at the time there were no off-ramps, right? So um, I was watching this. I was like, okay, explain it to me. How do I put it in my hand? You know, I had, I had all those questions. Right. And nobody could really tell me that part of it, but it was definitely there. Um, you know, I went into these chat rooms and I saw a lot of these these guys talking about um, Bitcoin on on the Freenode server. Freenode was kind of where everybody would chat and and talk about Bitcoin. Okay. Um, whenever you would go in there, that was at one time that was actually how they were still confirming transactions was using these IRC channels before there was a lot of computers out there. So the information that we were getting was was very very early on, but. What ended up happening was I, I, you know, I saw the guys transfer Bitcoin from wallet to wallet and I was like, well, this is cool, but it, it just didn't make a lot of sense to me at the time because I was, I still couldn't figure out how do we turn it into money, right? Right. Because there was no off ramps. There's yeah, nothing yeah. you could trade it for or sell yeah. it for. And at this time there was nobody with like memes out there to, to throw <laughs> at you either <laughs> to, to really help you kind of understand everything, you know? So <laughs> I was like, this is a monetary revolution, <laughs> right? And and as cool as it sounded, you know, I I was dealing with my own um, my own turmoil from from the uh, financial crisis that it had just happened, mm -hmm. you know. So everybody was kind of preoccupied dealing with things. So as I as I as I moved past, you know, the questions, I was just like trying to take care of myself eventually, you know, and. I went through the next three years watching things happen. You would see things like Mt. Gox and the price would spike and come down. And then you would see, uh, you know, all kinds of different news about Bitcoin. And it, most of it was related to pricing and then falling. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I stayed up on it, but I, I decided I wanted to, like, learn some more about it. I started digging into uh, Bitcoin Magazine. I actually had some articles around um the, the first ASIC chips. Um, I, I think Vitalik was actually writing um, articles back then still. And the only other source besides that was Bitcoin talk. And, you know, this is at a time Satoshi was still posting on the forum. And, you know, you, you could, you know, you would think this was a real person, you know, like, like, there was no question in my mind that this was a real person. And then, you know, uh, Vitalik was, was posting uh, articles about the ASIC chips and um, how it was kind of antithetical to the whole ecosystem because it was against the one CPU, one vote rule. Interesting. So the original computers, the CPUs, they were the only ones mining Bitcoin, but the GPUs as well, weren't they kind of competing? Oh, yeah, yeah. They were, they had, yeah, they had GPUs. It was funny because you would have people with uh, computers um, with the sides taken off and they would have box fans in front of them. 
on the, on so the GPUs. The prehistoric <laughs> ASIC cooling. Right, right. And, and you know, I, I don't think anybody really expected ASICs to be such a, a huge leap in, in hash rate. And whenever we started really getting into it, um, I think it was Avalon came out with the very first manufactured ASIC in that same year. This was 2013, 2014 area. Um, that same year, you started to see, um, I think, Bitmain came out with one and they were the first ones to actually come to market but there were some other guys like butterfly labs before then okay you know and and they had pre-sold these miners and everybody was supposed to get these miners and they didn't d deliver on time it's you know it's kind of an age-old story <laughs> in this changed. business yeah yeah exactly um but you know that's where we started to really get some understanding around you know what the silicon lottery was and you know what is the silicon lottery um so whenever you produce a uh wafer a a chip wafer not all of those chips are good chips. Some some perform oh. better than others, right? Okay. So so whenever you you know an ASIC machine was the first thing where we're going to put a ton of chips on a board and we're gonna we're gonna run these things at, at at their max potential, right? And what what we did was these these ASIC chips. Whenever you get them, you can only get so much capacity from TSMC or Samsung, and usually that capacity is based on the year before. So these new companies coming in to get capacity at these large chip makers, there was only so much they could get. So even if you got bad chips, you just take what you get because you have to use them, right? Wow. And and we still deal with this today. But I imagine compared to the CPUs and the GPUs, even if you got lower in the lottery, you're yeah. probably getting, I mean, much more of a hash rate than... Well, well, this is where firmware and tuning and things like that come in, right? So, um, you know, we, we've... The, we've done quantum leaps since the the S ones and the the S threes that I'm talking about, but um, the the hash rate at that time, whenever a miner would come out, um, the S one came out. There wasn't a lot of S twos out there. Um, by the time the S three came out, was probably six to eight months later. Okay. And then the S five came out probably another six months later. So whenever we were buying used miners on eBay, nobody really cared about them. Nobody knew about them. But uh, by the time I got my hands on my first S1 in 2014, it was technically unprofitable. So profitability was a complete afterthought whenever you were mining Bitcoin back then. It was just, it was literally about just getting access to sats. That's, that's all we wanted, you know. And and the idea behind that was it wasn't really so that you could hodl because this wasn't the mentality back then. You had to share it and you had to you had to bring people into the ecosystem or else it's really not worth anything, right? Hey, it's Amy. Click over here to subscribe. Click over here for more content and we'll see you next time.